I want to continue the series about the Big Bang Theory that I left off in January 2014, but since we are way behind where we should be, I want to skip all the background stuff that I was going to do and jump straight into something called the angular power spectrum of the cosmic microwave background. This is not an easy concept to understand, and only a very few people in the world actually do. This is very unfortunate because the angular power spectrum of the cosmic microwave background is by far the most spectacular and definitive piece of evidence that the Big Bang Theory is the correct cosmological model and that God did not create the universe in six days some 6,000 years ago. The angular power spectrum of the cosmic microwave background is literally thousands of data points whose values have been measured by dedicated instruments over the past 25 years and, most remarkably of all, the Big Bang Theory predicts the exact values of almost all of these data points. No other theory can explain the angular power spectrum of the cosmic microwave background. Not young earth creationism, not the steady state theory, and not plasma cosmology. In this video I will review some of the properties of light that we will need, then discuss the cosmic microwave background. In future videos, we will see how the Big Bang Theory explains the cosmic microwave background, what the angular power spectrum of the cosmic microwave background actually is, and how it is a logical consequence of the fundamental postulates of the Big Bang Theory. In episode 9b, we saw how light can be modeled as an electromagnetic wave. At every point in space, the electric and magnetic fields have a magnitude and a direction. Disturbances in these fields can propagate at the speed of light through empty space in the form of electromagnetic waves. In such a wave, the direction that the electric and magnetic fields oscillate in are perpendicular to each other, and both are perpendicular to the direction that the wave is moving in. The most important property of an electromagnetic wave is its wavelength, which is the distance between two successive crests. Another important property is polarization, which is the direction that the electric field oscillates in. Light can also be modeled as a stream of particles called photons. All photons are massless and travel at the speed of light, but each photon has its own energy. The relation between the wave and particle picture of light is that an electromagnetic wave with wavelength lambda is equivalent to a photon with energy E equals hc over lambda, where h is Planck's constant and c is the speed of light. The fact that light can be modeled as a wave or as a particle might seem paradoxical. After all, a particle is located at a particular point in space, while a wave is distributed throughout space. The full resolution of this paradox requires quantum electrodynamics, which is way beyond the scope of this video. Basically what happens is that energy can only be added or removed from the electromagnetic field in discrete units. If you add energy to the electromagnetic field in the form of a wave-like disturbance with wavelength lambda, then the amount of energy that you add to the field can only be an integer multiple of hc over lambda. So for instance, you can add an energy 3 hc over lambda or 4 hc over lambda, but not 3.65 hc over lambda. This is exactly like what would happen if light was made of photons with energy hc over lambda. You can create 3 or 4 photons, but not 3.65 photons. At any rate, this is way beyond what we need to understand the cosmic microwave background. In our discussions, we will usually just mix the wave and particle properties of light by referring to photons of wavelength lambda, when we actually mean something that is both an electromagnetic wave with wavelength lambda and a photon of energy E equals hc over lambda. Before moving on, recall that human beings can only see photons with wavelength between 380 nanometers and 750 nanometers, and these wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation are called visible light. Each wavelength of visible light corresponds to a particular color of the rainbow. From longest to shortest wavelength, the colors of the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Although we cannot see photons with wavelengths greater than 750 nanometers, or less than 380 nanometers, we classify such wavelengths into categories based on their usefulness to humans. Photons with wavelengths shorter than 380 nanometers are classified as, from longest to shortest wavelength, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma ray. Similarly, photons with wavelengths longer than 750 nanometers are classified as, from longest to shortest wavelength, radio, microwave, and infrared. Most sources of light, such as stars, emit photons of many different wavelengths, and the intensity of the light is not the same at each wavelength. 
Astronomers can separate the light from a star into its different wavelengths by passing it through a prism or a diffraction grating. Then they can measure the intensity of the light at each wavelength. A plot of intensity of light versus wavelength from some source of light is called a spectrum of that source. The spectrum of an object is determined by what physical processes created the light and how that light has been modified on its journey to us. One of the most important types of electromagnetic radiation is thermal radiation. All objects are made of smaller components such as atoms or molecules that are in constant motion due to thermal energy that is distributed throughout the components of the object. This random motion causes the atoms and molecules to emit photons which carries away some of the thermal energy. Inside an object, the photons emitted by an atom are quickly absorbed and turned back into thermal energy. At the surface of the object, some of these photons are able to leave the object entirely, thus carrying away thermal energy. It is as if the surface of the object is emitting photons, which were created due to the random thermal motion of the atoms that make up the object. This radiation is called thermal radiation, and all objects emit this type of radiation. The spectrum of thermal radiation emitted by an object depends on its temperature and the properties of the object. An extreme case is that of a black body, which is a hypothetical object that absorbs all light that is incident on it. Such an object turns this light into thermal energy, which it then radiates back into its surroundings. The nice thing about a black body is that the spectrum of thermal radiation that it emits, called a black body spectrum, is entirely determined by the temperature of the object. A black body spectrum looks like a hill, and the wavelength at which the spectrum peaks depends entirely on the temperature. In fact, the wavelength at which the black body spectrum peaks is lambda sub max equals b over t, where b is Wine's constant, and t is the temperature. Notice that the wavelength at which the black body spectrum peaks is shorter for hotter objects. The thermal radiation emitted by actual objects does not have a perfect black body spectrum because no object absorbs all of the light incident on it. In real objects, there will be some wavelengths that are reflected by the object, while others are transmitted through the object. Now we are finally ready to talk about the cosmic microwave background. Imagine that you have a device that you can point in any direction and that can measure the intensity of light at a given wavelength coming from that direction. You would find that microwave radiation is coming from every direction in space, even directions that do not correspond to any star or galaxy. Further, if you were to carefully measure the intensity as a function of wavelength of this radiation in a given direction, you would find that the spectrum of this radiation is identical to a blackbody spectrum. In fact, the radiation coming from any direction has a blackbody spectrum, and on average the spectrum peaks at a wavelength of 1.06321 millimeters, corresponding to a temperature of 2.7255 Kelvin. That is 2.7255 degrees above absolute zero. This uniform background of radiation is called the cosmic microwave background, and I will sometimes abbreviate it as CMB. If you were careful in your observations, you would find that the temperature of the CMB is not exactly the same in every direction. For one thing, half of the sky is hotter than the other half. At the center of the hottest half, we find that the CMB spectrum peaks at a wavelength of 1.06098 millimeters, corresponding to a temperature of 2.73121 Kelvin. At the center of the coldest half, we find that the CMB spectrum peaks at a wavelength of 1.06543 millimeters, corresponding to a temperature of 2.71981 Kelvin. There are temperature variations on all angular scales smaller than half of the sky, but they have a much smaller magnitude. Indeed, the temperature variations are within 30 micro Kelvin on angular scales smaller than one half of the sky. There have been three space-based missions that have mapped the CMB temperature at each point on the sky. These are the COBE mission, the WMAP mission, and the Planck mission. There have also been balloon-based instruments and ground-based temperatures that have mapped the CMB temperature over parts of the sky. The blue and red pictures of the CMB that we often see are maps of the CMB temperature on the sky. Each point on such a picture corresponds to a point on the sky. The orientation is such that the disk of the Milky Way galaxy is a horizontal line through the middle of the picture, the center of the Milky Way is at the center of the picture, and the top and bottom of the picture correspond to directions perpendicular to the plane of the Milky Way's disk. In these pictures, the average temperature and the asymmetry between the hot and cold halves of the sky have been removed. The blue areas correspond to regions of the sky where the CMB temperature is lower than average, while the red areas correspond to regions where the temperature is higher than average. 
In the next video, I will describe how the Big Bang Theory explains the existence of the cosmic microwave background, its perfect blackbody spectrum, the fact that half of the sky is hotter than the other half, and the temperature variations on smaller angular scales.